I'm here in Reno, Nevada, the United States, at Collaboration Cures Conference. So this is attended by people who are interested in sleep. If you have dentists, orthodontists, doctors, physical therapists, myofunctional therapists, speech language pathologists, and more. The topic of my conversation is about stopping overthinking. And it's quite simple in terms of the title, but it's quite challenging in terms of the doing. And we as human beings, we do have a capacity to overthink and we have a capacity to spend a lot of time lost in our mind. And the last thing that we want to be doing is at three o'clock in the morning, instead of in a deep and restful sleep that we are lying there, we're not quite awake enough to get up, but we're not quite tired enough to fall back asleep. It's almost that we are in a state of limbo. And with that, the mind tends to to race. Overstimulation of the mind during the day and overstimulation of the autonomic nervous system is going to contribute to insomnia or technically it's known as low arousal threshold during sleep. Insomnia affects about 30 to 50 percent of people. It does seem to affect more females than others. Now if our objective is to help to quieten the mind during sleep we have to think about what are we doing during the day. Mobile phone use, social media, and especially when we are skimming information, that we are skimming information, paying very, very little time on any topic. And it's almost then that we are training the brain to jump from, from one thing to another, to another, to another, to another. And that's the opposite to attention. Attention is when we are able to hold our attention on one thing for a period of time without distraction. Just as distraction can be trained by overuse of mobile phone and social media, attention can be trained by holding attention on the breath. And whenever the mind wanders, you bring it back. And the mind wanders, you bring it back. And every time the mind wanders and you notice that your mind has wandered and you bring your attention back onto your breathing, you're developing the brain and you're also increasing your ability to hold attention. The benefit about this is that you're less likely to spend so much time lost in thought and you have a greater capacity then to direct your energy to where you want to spend it most. So whether it's a task at hand or whether it's relating to another individual. A lot of the time that we do go through life, that's just the reality of it, and we don't necessarily pay attention to what we are doing. We might be doing one thing, but we are thinking about something else. Nor do we always pay attention to the person that we are relating to. So we might be there in body, but we're not necessarily listening to them because we are either, either thinking of the past or thinking of the future. So in terms of the breath, paying attention to the breath is a tremendous first step to bring a quietness to the mind. Other factors that do contribute to insomnia, of course, are how do you breathe during sleep? Do you have your mouth open or do you have your mouth closed? If your mouth is closed, your sleep tends to be deeper and with more time spent in deep sleep, you will be less likely to waken up. Also by breathing through your nose, your respiratory rate is slower, your breathing is lighter, you also will have greater recruitment of the diaphragm and that's more likely to keep you in sleep. Conversely, mouth breathing, fast breathing, shallow breathing, hard breathing, upper chest breathing is more likely to arouse you from sleep. So how we breathe is telling the brain whether the body is safe or whether the body is under threat. And when you go to sleep, the objective is that you breathe in a way that you are telling the brain that the body is safe. Now how you breathe during your sleep is influenced by your breathing during wakefulness. So bring good functional breathing patterns into your everyday life. So this is my topic in about 30 minutes. There are so many benefits to it in terms of not only will it improve sleep quality and energy levels, but you develop the capacity to hold your attention and what you want to hold of the pan. And that's a very important trait as human beings. How many of us have been trained how to concentrate? 
So before I leave you, I'll just give you a little bit of a view of Reno from where I am standing. Quite a busy place, quite a lot happening. So you can see the pace of modern living. All you have to do is just watch cars in absolutely every direction. So we're right next to the mountains. I haven't seen a bit of it yet. I arrived from the hotel room, from the airport to the hotel room, and vice versa. So this morning I did get out for about 10 minutes, and I did that to purposely expose myself to daylight in the morning. So that's very, very important. So anyway, from Reno, Nevada, think about your state of mind and think about your sleep. Thanks. Bye.